Hello, everybody, and welcome to another wonderful episode of The Best Games, period. The show where we get together every week, myself and my amazing, wonderful, and ever-intrepid co-host, Naomi Lugo. Ever-intrepid here. <laughs> I mean, I mean, The Long Dark is your favorite game. Yeah, yeah. Right? It, it is your favorite. It's one of them. I okay, mean, one of your having favorites. ADD, it, it varies, you know. It, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I understand. Yeah. Sort of. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I don't. Anyway, this is episode 99 of this show that I drifted off in mid-sentence explaining. It's where we get together every week and we talk about a game that uh, we think might be considered great and might even be considered one of the best games of all time that belongs in video game canon. And this week we're doing Plants vs. Zombies. Woo-woo! PVZ! Yeah! Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this one, but I'm sure we'll get into that in a little bit. Before we kick off everything, how are you doing? I'm doing I'm doing well. How are you doing, Jack? I'm doing okay. And I realized, just as I was asking, it, there's really no other answer you can give on a podcast. <laughs> I'm doing really terrible. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> it's... It's not like we can, oh, oh okay, let's, let's have an actual conversation about how we're doing, you know, the status of our lives, what's going on, just spill our guts, and at the end of the day, we'll maybe talk about Plants vs. We'll Zombies. We'll talk about it no. for like 10 minutes, you know, at the end. The purpose of this show is to talk about video games, and video games, as we all know, are completely divorced from how we're feeling, or our own personal interpretations or any subjective opinions. This is serious business. Absolutely. That's why we're talking about adorable <laughs> zombies and, and plants today. For sure. Uh, but before we get into that, how how are, are you? I almost asked the same question again. Great. <laughs> Good job, me. This is great. <laughs> I am doing well. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been playing? So I finished God of War. Amazing. Oh, yeah? Dad of Boy? Dad of Boy. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> I don't know where that other title came from, but Dad of Boy was fantastic. I plan on playing it again, and I recommend it to God of War fans out there and people who have a PlayStation and need a game. I mean, really, it's it's top-notch, and I look forward to having talks about it in the future, because, I mean... We're definitely going to see a lot more from this franchise. They kind of set it up so that we're going to see like 10 more games, which is fine with me if they're all this amazing. I, yeah. I mean, they they have like, what, 4,000 years of history to draw from just, in just terms of years. various pantheons of deities that Kratos could have many different reasons for wanting to kill, I suppose. Yeah, and I've heard the director talk about visiting those different mythologies and there's hints in the game um so it's it's definitely gonna come eventually i mean we might not yeah. see these for a few years but still go play it play it now and in the meantime or i guess after beating god of war i was kind of let up at a loss for a game so i've gone back to persona 5 which i had not finished yet i am 70 hours in though so oh geez okay that's a persona <laughs> game though for sure like i'm pretty sure i'm I don't even know how to estimate. Maybe you're probably halfway done. At, I don't know. <laughs> At least, hopefully, <laughs> I want to say like two thirds, but I don't know. So Persona Five and Dad of Boy, yes, kind of cover your your gaming. Yes, and repertoire. and on mobile, I'm playing Klepto Cats, which I, it is so me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> well, we might have to discuss that game on the show eventually when I get a little bit further in it. So. My my question is, is it cats that are kleptomaniacs, or are you a kleptomaniac who steals cats? I mean, kind of both. <laughs> Depending oh, on how you okay. look at it, you send out kitties into the universe, they go through like a portal and go and steal you random things, whether they be artifacts <laughs> from games or movies, and you kind of start hoarding these magical kitties, so kind of both, because we don't know where these kitties came from. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah. Definitely need to talk about that game more. Yep. Um I have not been playing all that much because I'm I'm gearing up for E3, which is kind of the the big to do of any uh you know, what what month is it? May? 
Oh, God. Yeah, it's May, and we're less than yeah, a month it's, away it's right now. My God. Yeah, yeah. Stress elevated. <laughs> Anytime it gets to be, like, a month away from E3 is kind of when things go a little bananas. A lot of people tend to think that it is the end of the year holiday season, which admittedly does get crazy if you are kind of dedicated to making sure you get to every single one of those major releases. But the real crazy time is the lead up to E3, just because it's every major gaming company in the universe coming to one place and trying to organize anything is a nightmare and it's my personal nightmare <laughs> and it's your and personal job huh. it's also my personal job <laughs> yeah i mean it is it is the most jobby feeling aspect of my job <laughs> so it makes me go a little crazy when it happens but you know whatever <laughs> uh to, to blow off some steam, I've been playing Stellaris in anticipation of the upcoming... There, there's going to be an upcoming DLC pack for it that adds a bunch of different scientific discoveries that you can encounter and crazy space monsters, and I, I dig all that kind of stuff. And I just... Stellaris is really good. Like, I, I did an honorable mention about it, like, uh, several months ago, and... It's a really great game that I would recommend to anyone who is into turn-based strategy slash slow-paced real-time strategy. Because hmm. um, basically everything moves in real time, but you can pause at any time, and each month is basically a turn, and like it moves so slowly that you can take some time to kind of strategize. So Stellaris is great, and I love it. And everyone should check it out. With that, I think that covers everything. Maybe maybe before we get into Plants vs. Zombies, we should do the poll we from should. Silent Hill. All right. So. The, the town where everyone knows your name. Because <laughs> like, there's cheers, three people. But awful. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all in a hellscape. So, yeah. Um, so. Wait, 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 wait question are they all in a hellscape or a is, dream is the little, or but is the little kid in a hellscape i guess that was one of my big demon, questions so is she or she, is she just like a I feel girl like who doesn't have a ton of problems little kids are just, just naturally demons maybe in games i don't know uh, horror horror, <laughs> st- horror, horror yes, the horror yes, genre has conditioned you to, to believe not, not horrible things children about children <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be the pull quote for the week children are demons <laughs> plants versus zombies all right so, as you listeners might know or may not know, last week we had a dare challenge from our lovely guest, Megadads. And if you voted that Silent Hill 2 is indeed one of the best games, period, um, Adam from the podcast would be singing Too Legit to Quit by MC Hammer. Um, a beautiful, beautiful music video if you haven't watched it. It's 11 minutes long. It emulates Thriller in that... MC Hammer gets roasted for about six minutes and then goes on like a dancing voyage. Seriously, go watch it. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> um, so on Twitter, so far, 68% of you say yes, and 32% of you hate fun and say no, that Silent Hill 2 is not indeed a best game period yet. Um, but Dang, there okay. are still 17 hours to go. I mean, I guess not as of the time of the publishing of this podcast, but there are 17 hours in this this time void that we exist in this recording. Um, so we'll see. We exist in a time void? We do now. That's terrifying. <laughs> Our voices and the us that is recorded onto this podcast are exist in a time void. We're safe. The real beings here. Okay. Not to get all existential okay. and weird, but... <laughs> This just turned into a Rick and Morty episode. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, yeah the 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 Facebook poll. I'll just bring that up real quick. Yeah, um, I think fared a little bit better. Uh, about about eighty percent of people said it was indeed one of the best games. Period. Yay. But still, uh, a larger number of people said no than I was expecting. They just but... don't understand that we're going to get a singing Adam. Like why? Are you guys actually being like noble and ethical here and actually voting on the game? Like what the heck? That was the point of the dare and the bribe, guys. Although 
Although maybe it's also unethical to like weight the vote with with promises. <laughs> it's a bribe. Of... <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, Silent Hill Two, welcome to being one of the best games. Period. Are you are you gonna do your crowd noise? Ah, uh, <laughs> no. Gosh, that, nope, <laughs> I've nope. done it before. I swear, it just not sure. today. I don't believe you, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna just like record it on my phone and play it, and then you're gonna be super impressed one day. Yeah, that that's how that will go down. <laughs> uh gosh. But Plants vs. Zombies, yes. the game that we have ostensibly come together to discuss this week. I thought it was a good idea to talk about Plants vs. Zombies <laughs> at the time. Uh, and you nominated not, it, sir. That I must did. be noted. I, I did nominate it. That was me. Um, and, you know, I... I do think it is a genuinely great game. I think I think it's actually probably a game that's really not probably. It is a game that's really interesting to think about and to kind of dissect and a lot of different things that I'm sure will come up in this conversation. I am just kind of on the fence as to whether or not it is a best game, a best game period. Yeah, I mean, it spawned its own little empire much like um, Angry Birds did. I mean, there's no Plants vs. Zombies movie yet. I'm sure that's on its way. But I feel like that kind of <laughs> propels it into another stratosphere, at least. Like, it gets up on the next tier on our board or whatever our rating system is, um, where, it, I mean, it, it's made a lot of money, and there's been plenty of spinoffs. I mean, EA acquired PopCap because of this title, or at least in part because of this title. So that at least gets it on the second ring, right? But yeah, it, it's it's tough to talk about because, I mean, when you brought it up, I was like, I was pretty skeptical. And I, I, I admit I was a little snobby. I was like, oh, that game, you know. <laughs> I mean, but then I like actually remembering this game, like I played a lot of Plants vs. Zombies when it first came out. Like I stole my little brother's iPad so I could play it because it was only out on iPad for a little bit. Or it was on PC and <laughs> iPad. So yeah, it took, the theft from a little brother for me to play this game. So that says something. Um, but I, wow. mean, I kind of wow. wanted to, okay. to bring up the topic of casual games, since that yeah. is a highly heated debate amongst the gatekeepers in gaming. But it, I mean, it is, is something it, to look is at. Is it still? Oh, yeah. Is it still a heated? You think so? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's definitely, like I said, the gatekeepers who are going to be like, oh, you're not a real gamer if you play Bejeweled. I mean, and it's tough because, yeah, there's different types of gamers who, like, the the casual gamers are in their own field. But if you kind of straddle both those lines, you know, it's it's weird. It's tough um, because I feel like casual games, and this one doesn't necessarily fall into it, they, they go for a different audience. Like, the Bejeweled games isn't necessarily for, you know what I'm saying, right? Like, Well, so I actually came with a different thesis on on casual casual gaming because of plants versus zombies okay um because a lot of the like as i was going through different reviews and different kind of breakdowns of plants versus zombies and there aren't a ton out there but they are out there the thing that kept coming up over and over again was uh how they played Plants vs. Zombies and it felt like a casual game, but the more that they played it, the less they, the, the more they realized that casual, like breaking games apart into casual and hardcore doesn't make any sense. It, it's like a nonsense term. It is. Uh, like Plants vs. Zombies came out at a time where I would consider 2009 to be kind of the heyday of people going oh it's a casual game like i think filthy oh you're a filthy casual like that <laughs> that gaming internet meme i think that originated like in 2009 2010 somewhere it's in there to think of it's almost 10 years ago i know right but I, I think that's where it comes from um and like it's just it's been that long it, it's taken that long to become kind of this like joke meme thing 
um, because it's not like it's not like a concrete thing, like a gorilla being shot that instantly becomes a meme. For it's like reason. one of those more like <laughs> it, it, it's like a subtle thing that over time, like the, the attitude becomes a meme. Well, and I mean, with the technology we have on our phones, we're able to play like full emulators of huge games like Final Fantasy games are out on iOS. I don't know on Android. They probably are. But we're able yeah, to are. play those games <laughs> on our phones. That is insane. So, And you can't tell me that Final Fantasy in any iteration is a casual game. I mean, that's like the opposite of a casual game. There was that weird dichotomy back in 2009 where if you played something on your phone or if it was a Flash game, that it automatically made it a casual game. Yeah, and like Bejeweled and like Aquarium Builders and all that stuff. And it's, it, it is tough because I get, I don't get the snobbery of it, but I get the differentiation between someone who only plays stuff like Bejeweled and whatnot and someone who isn't it hardcore into fps like it's different but i think it's different in the way that people who play survival games are different from people who play fps's you know it's it's it, and it's tough to gauge it from back in 2009 but mobile gaming has its own little niche now like i feel like a lot of gamers when they're away from their consoles or afk they do have their go-to games on mobile. It's just kind of a fact, you know? Like, I have my games on my phone at all times. I mean, granted, they're all kitty collectors, but they're still my games, you know? <laughs> and Yeah, yeah and, and I, I think, A, you're going to have to rewind a little bit and tell people about aquarium builders uh -huh. because there was a really strange period in gaming time, like, uh, gaming period where... There were a lot of games that revolved around building or maintaining aquariums, and I just realized in retrospect, that was pretty weird, right? <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's, it's in essence like another kitty collector game, but you're collecting fish. It's, I mean, for those of you who don't remember or need a little spark of memory, like this was also on Facebook um, when Facebook had its big gaming thing you could build your aquarium and it was one of the pay pay to play kind of schemes um or you could just sit around and wait for stuff to develop and you could build these aquarium like my roommate in college and I were super addicted to the one that was on Facebook like at one point I was considering getting her like a $25 gift card for her birthday for this stupid game cuz she would have loved it like it was ridiculous like you could log in and like I can't even remember the mechanics. Like click a couple bubbles and win more money to buy your fish or do your stupid upgrades. It, I mean, it's pretty similar to games and now, but there were a lot of these things, and they still exist. They're just not as fervent as they were back in the day. And I think yeah, the yeah. the director of this game actually made an aquarium game before this. I think it was more. It wasn't necessarily the standard aquarium builder. It had a little bit more gameplay elements to it, but he did make something. Um, I can't remember the name of that game. I also had a second thing I wanted to ask you, but I think even after, even after I asked you about the aquariums, my brain got so de derailed by the aquarium thing. <laughs> it had something to do with like the casual games kind of becoming a meme and... I, I think that now things are actually a lot better. Yeah. And that's largely because a lot of the people who were being kind of derided as, oh, a, a casual player were kids. Like they, they were they were little kids. <laughs> and uh, so it's those kids have grown up and now you're seeing instead of like gamer culture kind of lashing out at them you're seeing kids playing Fortnite, and they're they are gamers like they they do love games and it's because of games like plants vs. zombies and angry birds and a lot of those games that are quote unquote casual yeah i mean but go ahead does it doesn't make them any less games and i think that you know our show should reflect that we should we should talk about casual games because there's a lot going on in casual games and that that doesn't necessarily make them worse games or lesser games than their larger counterparts. Well, I mean, it, it kind of bridges the divide, right? Like I'm able to talk to 
like my friends who are not traditional gamers about games and they understand what I'm talking about. Like, because they're able to reflect on either games that they played when they were kiddos, you know, like Crash Bandicoot back in the day, or these casual games, you know, like I've convinced people to play my kitty collector games and they love them like (laughs) but we're able to talk about game mechanics whether that be as overt as they know but we're able to talk about these things and still bond about games and i'm able to talk about the significance of games with them because of what casual quote 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 unquote casual games have been able to give them you know so i think it's definitely a good thing for the games industry and I think you're right. Like we've we've kind of moved away from filthy casual, and now I think we're on to gatekeepers, which is I mean, if you if everyone doesn't know the term, it's more people who they they hold the gate. You know, they ask you questions like, "Oh, not you're, politely, not not, politely. not politely holding <laughs> nope. the gate, like they're holding act- it shut." <laughs> yep. Like, oh, you like games? What games do you play? Oh, you play Lego games? You're not a real gamer. Or, oh, you like overwatch who's your main and how many games have you played what's your rank like stuff like that stuff to kind of test you and see if you're a real gamer and as a female we get that a ton and it is obnoxious and i'm sure a lot of female listeners out there will relate to this like um uh, where they'll be asked like oh you're you game that's weird. I haven't seen a girl gamer before. Like, there's not a lot of you. Like, what games do you play? And then they'll proceed to judge you on that. And it's not really a conversation anymore as much as it is them kind of picking you apart. And it's it's obnoxious and annoying. So, Yeah, and I mean, especially with you, like, A, you play all the games, except for the ones with puzzles. <laughs> I still play them. It's just torture. <laughs> you just dislike them. Yeah. Anyway, gatekeeping and shaming people is obnoxious because we're all just here to enjoy games whether that be on mobile devices or on super expensive fancy pcs we're here to have fun also i've never understood the concept of gatekeeping to me it's as ludicrous as like seeing someone at a pottery class and being like oh you don't look like the kind of person who would enjoy pottery or like it's the same thing yeah like how can you judge someone i mean it's it's oh you go to movies i never would have guessed (laughs) uh i mean that's that's there are so few god there's so few (laughs) of you who go to movies yeah it's it's obnoxious don't be that person guys i'm sure since you're listening to this podcast you of course are not and you are all lovely people but yes let's let's avoid (laughs) gatekeeping anyway (laughs) back to playing casual games games. Um, yeah i mean and in this game yeah, sure. You're playing. You can play it on mobile. You can play the full first Plants vs Zombie game on mobile. Um, but it gets pretty intense. Like it is. It, it's pretty. It's simple, but it's still sophisticated in its systems enough where you'll have a pretty decent challenge. You know, it's it's a tower defense game at its core, but it's kind of done its own thing in a way. Like it it, it took the tower defense kind of idea and morphed it into something that is accessible but at the same time progresses pretty nicely i think i mean there's been complaints about the learning curve but i mean i i enjoyed it personally um it didn't make it dull for me you know yeah i i one of the things i think is actually really genius about plants vs zombies is the way it kind of bridges new ideas with old ideas um and an an example of that is they basically took uh the tower the tower defense idea and about two years into the development of plants vs zombies tower defense kind of took off as a genre in games it 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 had been like a genre for a while but uh, it, it took off and it experienced like a couple years of just being like the thing that everyone played online and on their phones. Um, and by the way, I would really, 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 really love it if one day we could do an episode on. Um, uh, oh, gosh, I'm blanking on the name. <laughs> I have it on my phone right now. I'm going to look at it. Uh, cast not. It's not Castle Crashers. It's Kingdom Rush. There we go. Hmm. Um. 
I adore Kingdom Rush, and it is a, a fantastic series of of tower defense games, but what is interesting about Plants vs. Zombies is it combined that tower defense mode with, A, a super wide variety of of towers, of, of plants, like that the there is a an element of almost diablo like variety oh man that's fantastic if that makes sense comparing or like loot drops comparing plants versus zombies to diablo my my life is complete <laughs> <laughs> but there's that and then it also combines uh ideas from games that are are as old as uh tappers um which it's either Tapper or Tappers. I think it's Tapper. I think Tappers. Um, I don't know. Is it? Okay. Ah. Well, the, the old the old school game where you were, depending on which version of the game you were playing, either serving up Budweiser or serving up Rupp Beer, um, it, it took that idea because in Tapper or Tappers, <laughs> uh, there are five different lanes, and that's why there are five different lanes in Plants vs. Zombies. It is a good number to kind of base uh, an oncoming wave of uh, problems, I guess you could say. Um, It is a manageable number, but also just on the edge of being overwhelming. Like, I think a lot of people look at five things and they're like, okay, I can probably handle five things, but six things, (laughs) that's too much. (laughs) Um, And I I think that's kind of... uh, part of the charm is and that's a really fundamental thing and i think it's really interesting that they reached back in time and got that kind of brilliant concept and then melded it with a modern idea in such an interesting way and it seems so simple that i don't think a lot of people think about it yeah i mean playing this game back in the day i definitely didn't think about that and it's tapper and it was released in 1983 (laughs) okay tapper um but yeah, I mean, you have to have a strategy later on in the game. I mean, there's there's different ways to play it. And I must say that my style personally is, I, <laughs> I wrote my notes here, it is an evolving hypothesis since I guess I was thinking Ooh. really deep Ooh. about my play style with symmetry. That's very artsy language. I know, right? Like, what a nerd. Anyway, so I guess what <laughs> I what I meant with that was I would test out different ways that these plants would interact with each other and then kind of implement it as I went. And then, of course, everything has to be symmetrical because, my God, like, there'd be points where there's, like, one zombie with an arm hanging off and I still have to get that last plant on there because otherwise my board is not complete, right? So, anyway. Exactly. What yeah, is yeah. your playing style, Jack? I think my playing style was always get as many as many offensive plants behind a wall of walnuts as possible. I liked having like that that complete wall behind which I could kind of have some some safety to mm. like experiment with different plants and kind of how different things worked. Um, and in front of the wall, I always liked if I could get away with it, like a a minefield because there was something just really satisfying about watching the zombies step on like potato mines and then getting blown up and covered in mashed potatoes. (laughs) Yep. I mean, those catapult zombies must have just been a nightmare for you then. Oh yeah. Yeah. They were the worst. Um, But you know, it's interesting that you mentioned the learning curve because I don't think I ever had a real problem with, I, I guess with failure in Plants vs. Zombies, it didn't. It never felt to me like it was the kind of game that you were expected to get right on the first or second try. Like eventually, you would hit those maps that are harder, and you'd have to kind of like start thinking about it in different ways, or you know, experimenting with different plants. And that that's also part of what's interesting about Plants vs. Zombies is that as you progress through each level, you get access to a new plant, and each new plant kind of lends itself to a different tactical style a different setup and that that difference is interesting because you'd often fall into a strategy that worked for several maps in a row and then you'd get creamed corn <laughs> and have to switch to something else that was a really bad joke it I'm sorry. was very I had to. very terrible Ugh. shame shame 
<laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's I, I, that's probably what I meant by evolving hypothesis. My God, I can't believe I wrote that. Anyway, like I would kind of guess what strategy would work and then just kind of watch it play out. Because yeah, like you said, I never really like felt like I had to get it right the first time. I mean, it was awesome when I did. And sometimes those levels didn't feel as satisfying because I guess maybe they weren't as challenging. Um, but I I liked the challenge a lot in Plants vs. Zombies, at least the first one, because it never seemed like it was, wasn't was fair. I mean, that's not necessarily true for the second game. I feel like some of the levels in there were kind of just too tough for the sake of being tough. Um, and I think that's something that the first game did really well, was balancing everything out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh... There, there's a part of me that was very sad when I heard that uh, Plants vs. Zombies was bought by EA. Because I, <laughs> yeah. even, even when, even back then, it wasn't that long ago when I say back then, but... <laughs> Almost, well, but, I mean, it was like 2013 or something, so it's been like yeah, five years. That's, that's a decent amount of time. Right, but you could see kind of where EA was going to take this this fledgling company that had so many good ideas and was willing to make weird stuff. And ever since then, they've only made plants versus zombies. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, the, the person who actually made, uh, plants versus zombies has since left to do, to make their own studio. I think they just this year released a game about a, a deadly octopus that is rampaging across the planet. Fantastic. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I wish that PopCap had been kind of f- let free to do weird stuff like that. Yeah. But instead, it's kind of been forced into a weird Plants vs. Zombies circle of life. Yeah. And it's it it's been kind of then... After, after everything that's happened now, it's kind of turned into it... EA has wanted to move it more towards um, like free to play games and I think little little mobile titles, which again we're talking about something that did come out as a mobile title, so nothing nothing against that. I just kind of wanted to see them get bigger and progress larger in their ambitions. And yeah, creatively. And I mean, I don't know if you played the uh, Garden Warfare. 3D ones. I mean, they were okay, but they definitely didn't have the creativity that the first game had, or I guess even the second one to an extent. Um, it it kind of just was a natural progression. I mean, like, why not go to console? Why not go 3D? Sure, Doom. I don't even know how to describe the gameplay technically right now, but it just didn't have that charm though that I really liked in the first one. That the charm and the addictiveness that I got. I feel like a lot of their player base either had nostalgia for the game or, you know, it was the kiddo was playing because seriously, there was a lot of kids playing that game and probably still are. And nothing against that. It's just, I don't know. There was something universal about the first Plants vs. Zombies that made it fun for everyone. And now they're kind of just prioritizing the family friendliness, I think. That's one thing that I was reading that they didn't specifically set out to make Plants vs. Zombies for any one group. And I think that is part of what kind of led to at least the, if not the phasing out, but the, the shift in how we regard casual Mm -hmm. games. Um, Because they, they straight up said to people who were confused by this, they're like hardcore people, hardcore gamers love your game and casual players love your game. How do you do it? And they're like, well, we we just made a good game, like people people aren't sorting themselves into these categories necessarily. People just want to play a good game, um, and that's that's kind of it at the end of the day, right? Like, uh, if it's good, everyone will play it. Yeah. Yes, EA. Gosh. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I guess I was reading that the director George Fan was actually fired, and. Um, oh really yeah and 
I don't know if the details were ever solidified, but he said out in a tweet that he basically disagreed with the way that EA was directing the game to be like freemium kind of play. And yeah. one of the, I don't know who it was, it was um, a user commented like, I wish I could play games and progress like back in the day. And he said, don't we all man or something like that. So it seemed huh. like he had some creative differences with, with EA and was fired because of it, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I mean, which is, as as a gamer, I'm like, you go, man, for sticking up to the big guy and, you know, landing on your morals, if that's indeed what happened. I mean, like, yay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. We, we should applaud that kind of, that kind of integrity. Yes. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, definitely, um, it, it's hard to gauge how long we've talked about this game now. <laughs> Due to <laughs> technical difficulties. Uh. <laughs> But one thing I definitely wanted to touch on is uh, someone named uh, Laura Shigihara. Mm -hmm. Um, I I, I hope I said that name right. I apologize if I didn't. Uh, But Laura composed the soundtrack to Plants vs. Zombies. Um, And I think that she deserves more recognition in the industry than I think she gets, uh, at least among players. I haven't, I don't know how well she's known you know, in in the you know upper echelons of game development. Ooh, but, fancy. Uh, yeah, a good word. Um, <laughs> but she she did she's done some music for Minecraft. She's done a track for uh, World of Warcraft, um, and she's done a whole lot of things. And I was looking more into her backstory, and because I know her. For from Plants vs Zombies, and also for um, she is a, a an indie game developer as well. And last year she released a game that I thought looked really interesting, and I would encourage a lot of different a, a lot of people to play it. It's uh, oh gosh, I always get the name wrong. It's called Rakuen. How do you spell that? R A K U E N. All right. Um, and she developed it entirely on her own and it's probably one of those games that's going to make you cry (laughs) it's about a sick boy in a hospital and basically he goes to a magical land that is probably in his dreams and he bonds with the other patients in the hospital and tries to make their lives a little bit better uh, on various quests in this magical world um so it's about getting to know all the, these people and he's on these quests with his mom. It's very sweet. It looks adorable. I encourage everyone to check it out. It is it's it is a good game. Um, so I, I knew her from that and I realized that she had worked on Plants vs. Zombies um, and her, her kind of life story is really interesting because apparently she was going to college and uh, she didn't set out to make music for games. She just had the opportunity to make music for a game that I can't recall off the top of my head. And she was like, I'll do this for free because I get to make music for a game. That's awesome. And uh, through that, she ended up getting a whole lot of other, other jobs making music for games. Um, And she was even at one point, like a friend of hers offered uh, like like showed her music off to Japanese uh, music producers, and they tried to they tried to give her a contract, but she said no because uh, the the reasons aren't exactly clear. But she didn't really like the way they did business or something along those lines. Something about that offer didn't appeal to her, and I think that's really interesting. And instead, she has kind of gone her own way and made games by herself, which is really hard to do. Uh, so, yeah, and I, I like that she contributed to uh, Plants vs. Zombies and to what might be one of its most iconic moments, the the music video at the end. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's her singing. <laughs> oh, man. Can you remember the lyrics? I cannot. Dang but, it. But... We we could we could try and sing it like there is a sing along video. Of course there is. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah uh, yeah check check out Rakuen, and 
that that's my that's my thing. The music in in Plants vs Zombies is very good. Okay. And she should be better known. All right. So we may be at the point of the show <laughs> where watch the show ends up being a half hour long. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not. And if not, listeners, you can you can be mad at us. It's fine. Um, <laughs> Well, we are at the point of the show where we read negative Metacritic readings, ratings, wow. Um, and we decided on Contrarian Corner, right, for, for the name, as suggested by a lovely listener. So I have a couple here, because um, there were not a lot of negative reviews, which is nice, right? Yeah. So the first one is from Henry M., who rates this O, because they have typed in zero wrong. So, I rate this O because I bought the... Wait, 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 wait. You can do that? You can, you can rate well, a game a letter out of 10? Well, at least in their written review, it's rated an O. But oh, it's that is technically amazing. a zero. So, you know, just had to be that. That's amazing. There. All right. So, Henry okay. M. on May 5th, 2009, rated... It said, I rate this an O because I bought a PC power gaming house. Not to play Commodore 64 games, but to play the next generation of gaming. I'm getting tired of developers releasing mini game budget style. The iPhone is way over that, is way over that way, sorry. If you want to be here, then release something my machine was made for. And two out of 21 users (laughs) found that helpful. Um, And the next review is by Death the Kid from August 18, 2013. Horrible. I have no clue why anyone would like it. My brother bought it and sunk 150 hours on PC and 200 on his iPad! Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. That is a... Okay, well, let's back up. That is a lot of time to spend on Plants vs. Zombies. 200 on... A lot. I have a feeling it might be a little bit exaggerated, but I okay. shall continue. I mean, <laughs> I, I trust Death the Kid. <laughs> Fair. Death is a trustworthy trustworthy thing. It comes but to everybody. But as a child? As a child? Was he, were, were they deaf? Were they trustworthy? I mean, I might maybe a little rambunctious, but still trustworthy. All right. Fair, fair. All right. So, and then they said, I played it and I must say to take your $10 and I don't care what you buy as long as it's not this game. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, I remembered the point I was going to make at the very beginning of this episode. All right. Uh. So thank you, Death the Kid, and that other person. Henry. Whose name I forgot. Henry. Um, I think part of the reason that this found kind of a a mass appeal to people and managed to break out of what people thought of casual games is that it initially released on Steam. And Steam was a relatively new thing in 2009. So I mean, weird. it had been around <laughs> for a while. I, I don't want I don't want to like give people the impression that I'm like, oh, it, it Steam came out in 2009. No, like it had been out for a while, but uh, it 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 wasn't seen as a place to put kind of these middle of the road games. Like now you can find all kinds of crazy stuff <laughs> on Steam. Literally everything. My god. Literally garbage. You can find garbage on Steam. I'm, I'm sure there's a game right called now. Garbage. Yep, I'm looking it up. I bet it's like a still photo of garbage that has like 20 achievements attached to it. <laughs> that you get in like the first 5 seconds from opening up. Oh, all right. I'm yeah, looking yeah. it up. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's it came out at this time and it's surrounded by a lot of these triple a games. And I think a lot of people realized that there was a space in gaming for kind of this middle of the road, $20 game that wasn't necessarily, you know, $60 of game, but it was for $20 well worth the price. And I think that contributed to it being, uh, being, I, I don't want to say revolutionary force in video games because that sounds way too strong, but a a force of change, something that subtly shifted the industry towards uh, where we are now, which I think is a little bit better than where we were before. Yeah, maybe. Before when? <laughs> before the game know. came out? Yeah. I mean, sure. We'll say yeah, for positivity's sake. <laughs> we're doing great. I mean, people, I granted, people are still shocked that, like, 
uh, Se- <laughs> Setsuna, Se- Senua's sacrifice, mm-hmm. Senua's sacrifice, yeah. uh, can exist for forty dollars. So maybe we haven't come all that far. But there, I guess there being a middle option between, you know, one dollar iPhone games and sixty dollar console games, I think that helps. Yeah, I think I think that carved out a niche to some degree, a niche. Yeah. All right, going back to garbage on Steam. So the first is Trailer Park Boys Greasy Money Ricky's Garbage Bag, which has a that sounds drink. like it's, it's <laughs> it sounds like it was actually ish. licensed. Yeah, I think it was um, released in February 2018, and then the other ones are Rocksmith Garbage. So the band garbage, which makes sense. And then there's a, a movie, and that is 30 Years of Garbage, the Garbage Pails Kids story. Great. And then the other notable one is a game called Garbage Day, which was released in 2016, and that has mostly negative reviews. So no literal pictures of garbage, but... Someone should get on that, because yeah. at least that would be accurate. Yeah. I mean, Garbage Day has mostly negative reviews and it's about collecting garbage i think i i'm guessing it's a reference to that meme garbage day i don't know the meme so oh it it was a thing i missed it i missed the thing it's okay well we'll we'll get you caught up after after the show all right all right so do you think it's one of the best games, period? Do you think PopCap made a best games, period, with Plants vs. Zombies? See, this is still tough. I mean... So, going back in time, how did we vote for Angry Birds? Was Angry Birds in the Pantheon? I think I, I said yes, because it, it meant so much for getting games out there. Because I, I don't think Plants vs. Zombies sold on the level that Angry Birds did. Mm-hmm. But also, it was 20 times more expensive than Angry Birds, and yeah, it was still a, a, a big success. It was the, the fastest-selling PopCat game ever, um, up to that point, anyway. Yeah, see, the reason I ask is they, they kind of seem on the same caliber, at least. Really? In, in, yeah, I mean, at least in my, per- I was going to say personal mental, because that's a word, or a <laughs> phrase, in my personal mental. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, so, I dig it. At least in the term, or in the way that those games can both be in the Pantheon. See, I, I'm stuck. Because personally, I, I enjoyed the game. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, And I think technically it's well done, and artistically it's also very well done. It gets the point across, but it's still simple, and it's accessible, but there's still complexity in there. But there's still something that's kind of pushing me back from saying yes. What do, you, what do you think that is? I'm not sure. I mean, it, it might still be the same kind of snobbery I had before. Um, that I guess I, I it's an internal struggle, it seems, to <laughs> recognize this game. But, I mean, we've also talked about other mobile games before, like Threes. Um, yeah. And I want to nominate my kitty collector games, like Nikoetsume and, and um, Clectocats. And those seem to be kind of the same, if not like underneath this game. So I'm not sure what's holding me back. Well, maybe maybe stop thinking of it as like a hierarchy cuz I don't I don't think any like a game is a game, right? Yeah. Um like I I think I think we live in a world where Tetris can be one of the best games of all time, but also, you know, uh Horizon Zero Dawn might be I, like we haven't done an episode on Horizon Zero Dawn, but how about Shadow of the Colossus? Shadow of the Colossus and Tetris can both be considered best games of all time, but they are very, very fundamentally different. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I guess I'm just using the hierarchy to try to just determine why I'm thinking this way because I would consider other mobile games, and that's where I'm trying to decide if it's because it's a mobile game or at least more mobile friendly, and I don't know. So I'm going to defer to you. Do you say yes to this game? I, th- I'm also, <laughs> see, it's frustrating because I'm also on the fence. Ah, you're trying um, to get me to figure it out, huh? <laughs> I, I was trying to help, I was trying to get you to help me work through my, my uncertainty. Um, 
because I do think that it does so many things well. I think it is a fantastic game that I think did a lot of interesting things for tower defense. I think part of my part of my hesitation is that unlike with Tetris, for example, I don't see a whole lot of evolution of that tower defense style. Mm-hmm. Like it did get a sequel, but I'm talking about like wider in the industry. Like I don't see a whole lot of, you know, what, what is the next evolution of yeah. plants versus zombies from a different artistic perspective? <laughs> PVZ clones. Yeah, I guess. Well, I'm <laughs> not, sure, not I'm even, sure they not, existed. Not clones, but... not, not clones, yeah. but I mean like successors. Like you, from Tetris, you get like puzzle fighter or, you know, Dr. Mario, like those aren't necessarily clones. They're do- doing different things, um, but using kind of that same core concept. And I don't see, again, I see a lot of tower defense. And I guess maybe to an extent you could say that uh, Plants vs. Zombies helped to re-resurrect the tower defense genre. But I don't know that that's enough Mm -hmm. so it's kind of Um, on its own island a fun island but which which i think you can get away with um but in if you to to kind of get away with being on your own island doing your own thing i think you have to be almost transcendent and it's hard for me to evaluate a game that doesn't have a narrative aspect in that way like um, like Plants vs. Zombies does have a narrative. It does have a story. It's very, very rough and barely there. And so it has to stand alone on its mechanics and its, its soundtrack and its visual charm. And I think all of those are solid. I just don't know that any of those are truly revolutionary in a way that makes a best game period. I think it makes a great game. I think it makes a very amazing game, but I think that it falls short of being something that we would call a best game period. Yeah. I think I'm in the same camp. Like it's super addictive and fun, but that's pretty much it for me. Like I enjoy its (laughs) charms, but it like, it's not a game that I think back on. I'm like, oh yeah, I really love that game. It's like, oh yeah, I, 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 I played that game a lot. You know, it, it doesn't, it didn't have that hook in me. Like I had to remember that I played it a lot. Like it wasn't a solid part of my, I guess, in a way. But then again, but then again, if you have a lot of fun with it, isn't it doing its job? Yeah. And that's you where know? I'm, that's where I'm stuck. Cause it's like, I don't want to just say flat. No, because I did have a lot of fun and I did play a lot of it. I beat it not once a couple times and i do think i had a lot more fun than it's it's um what progeny i guess um it's sequels so i don't know yeah so i i think i think where i land is a very soft no um with with the caveat that this show is really just (laughs) like like whenever we're talking about games it's not arbitrary, but it's very subjective. Like anyone's opinion about games is going to be subjective. There are probably people out there who say that Plants vs. Zombies is garbage. There are probably people out there who think it is the literally the best game of all time. Um, and what I, I kind of want this show to be is just a positive thing where we get to talk about great games and why they're great. Um, if that if that makes sense the the whole the whole gimmick of like is this a best game period is like a really arbitrary and secondary thing which is why we i think we don't spend a ton of time dwelling on it in the, the show and we don't submit a scientific paper with our points and theses <laughs> except when we are having a hard time figuring out where our where our personal line is i think mine is at no though yeah <sighs> mm. Man, this is tough. <sighs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna say no too, just because it didn't have that special spark that makes best games for me. Okay. That's where I land. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna say no with like a little uh, uh, an additional caveat. Go uh. go play Rakuen. <laughs> and mine has a dot 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 at the end with a question mark, or is it? <laughs> dun dun dun. Yep. All right. How do we end this show again? <laughs> I don't know. How do we end this show? Uh, extra life. <laughs> extra life. <laughs> If you haven't heard of Extra Life before, I encourage you to check out extra-life.org. It's a wonderful charity where people all across the United States and Canada get together every year to play games for sick and injured kids in hospitals all over. Um, It's really amazing. And when you sign up, you can actually choose which hospital uh, you want your money to go to so you know where it's going and you know it's going to a good cause. 100% of it goes directly to helping those kids in the hospitals, which is pretty fan flipping tastic. And if you want to get more involved in, on the community side of things, maybe engage with some people in your local local area, you can do that on community.extra-life.org where you can you know connect with these various people and who are all passionate about playing games and helping helping kids and you can also find articles about games written by yours truly and sometimes naomi you're gonna be helping me cover e3 actually yep welcoming the caffeine heck yeah (sighs) and uh you can also find this very podcast over there and in addition to community.extra-life.org, you can find this podcast on GameInformer.com. You can also find it on SoundCloud, iTunes, all those fun places where you find your your podcasting needs met. We are probably there. I looked myself up on the podcast app. I think it's just called the podcast app the other day. I looked up the show and yep, we were on it. So we made yeah. it. Yeah, we, we, we made it. We're in the big leagues now. Yeah. Uh, the, the big leagues of podcasting. The, <laughs> everyone's listening to us. The, 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 the now, now, Jack. presidents of the United States. The Bill Gates of the world Calm. is listening to Come back our to Earth. Versus, Okay. And he's back. Um, and... That, that's it. <laughs> the end. That's all she wrote. <laughs> yes. The end. Is, is, or is, is there it? Anything, is there any, uh, we also have a Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash best games period. Because you need to you can, support this kind of rambling. Yes. <laughs> if you, uh, if you donate a dollar per month, you can, uh. You can actually get access to a bunch of fun little episodes that we've recorded over the the months. Um, and also, uh, if you donate $10 a month, you get to listen in on our live recording sessions. So you can experience all of this rambling firsthand Un-edited. with none of, none of the bits cut out. So you can hear everything, <laughs> like all of our sniffs. Our coughs, <laughs> our our snorts, our <laughs> syllables, all of them <laughs> in HD sound, maybe four K. I don't know for four K sound. All right, <laughs> so do that. <laughs> it helps us keep the lights on and uh, keep the podcast going. And sometimes find new and exciting guests. Yes. Uh, And with that, we'll see you on the flippity dippity.